All right, so five fours, medians and altitudes. We've already talked about altitudes. The altitudes intersect to provide you the what? Height. They intersected to provide you the Entry. orthocenter. Okay. Um, so we talked about that on Thursday. Okay. Talking about the medians today. The medians are going to intersect to create something called the centroid. Okay. Um, but before we can get to the centroid, let me know what a median is. Okay. Um, just like any other of the three points that we've talked about, whether it be the circumcenter, the end center, or the orthocenter, uh, the centroid is created by three concurrent segments. Okay. Uh, the grouping of segments, or the type of segments that uh, we're looking at for the centroid is, like I said, the median. And by definition, a median is a segment whose endpoints are a vertex and then the midpoint of the opposite side. Okay. The segment whose endpoints are the vertex or a vertex and then the midpoint of the opposite side. A median has to travel because the midpoint being obviously on the interior of the opposite side. Okay. Uh, the median has to travel through the interior of the triangle. Therefore, every median has to do that. So all three medians will be on the inside of your triangle, which is not the same for other uh, segments we've talked about so far. Um, but because all three medians are on the inside, then your centroid will always be on the inside as well. Okay? And that's a good question. If you go back to uh, the quiz that we took on uh, Friday, I asked you several questions about you know, where does the end center, where, where does it uh, have the ability to show up? Where does the ortho center have the ability to show up? What types of triangles, that kind of thing. Okay? A lot of that quiz was kind of recognition vocabulary type stuff, uh, which we say in class, I say it all the time, I ask questions related to it, but I don't know if we all write that down and then use that information to prepare. Uh, so the medians will always intersect on the inside of your triangle or the interior triangle. Uh, and then that point, that point that is created, that point of concurrency is referred to as the centroid. Okay. Um, so that first bullet there, you're talking about the intersect on the inside. Uh, don't worry too much about that uh, yellow box yet. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but the centroid is the, the point of concurrency for your medians. Okay? Now, just like anything else, we only need two of the three medians. Okay? Uh, some exercises do not ask you to do all three, uh, but in general, all you need is two of the medians to locate the uh, the centroid. Okay. Um, just some, some key features of the centroid is if we were to what's from concurrency of the median. Yep. To be the very middle thing. Yep. Good point of concurrency is just another way of saying intersection. Okay. Uh, it's just the, the word that we use for intersection when the lines that we're using, there's more than two of them. There's actually three or more. Um, we, we call that the point of concurrency. I mean, those lines are concurrent at a particular point. That's the centroid in this case. Um, a physical world application of centroid is that uh, if I were to take a triangle, let's say that we take a, um, that triangle up there, F to D to E, and we cut it out of the smart board, cut it out of the plastic. I give you that plastic triangle in your hand. Okay? And I ask you to Kind of balance that on your finger or the tip of a pencil or a pen, you have to yes. me, uh, so that that so that that uh, triangle is parallel to the ground. Okay, the place that you would place your finger, your pen, your pencil, or whatever would be at the center, of it. and that thing will balance um, parallel to the ground. Okay, uh, in a um, yes, you said do it like that was a real life situation. <laughs> I thought you said you compared it to real life. A real life application. Yeah, like it's a real physical application type thing. Um, yeah, but why would wait, you so like, why would you need to know that? Wait, so like, why would you need to know that? No, it's going to be true. Why would you need to know that? Like, I don't know, maybe I'm a, a sculptor and I'm making an abstract art piece and I need to balance it. Well, I don't think that's a good idea. I like the answers when you're like, if you're going to school or something like that. I mean, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Like, I'll do research, Google, say, what's a what's a real life application of of the center? Just to find my shoes. What? You have one. Um. So, 
That's what the center is. We're going to refer to that as the center of gravity on the test. I'll give you a question. This is the point that is referred to as the center of gravity or the center of mass for a triangle. And then you choose center. Okay. Um, so if that's just a feature characteristic that is often um, talked about in any uh, any math class there's, uh, or geometry class. There's, there's a lot of calculus that can be done um, with these points that we're learning as well. Uh, so maybe later on, if you, if you go that route in the calculus course, um, you would kind of probably talk about centroids again and the, the, the things you can do with um, the operations in calculus with that point. I sprained my ear. I was like, I think I sprained my ear. Yeah, you can. You sprained the other real thing. Yeah. I don't know. Your ear has cartilage and muscle in it, and you can only sprain muscle. I learned that in CPR in third grade. Okay, so here we go. Um, so I want to talk about that that last slide had that theorem on it. And that theorem talks about some relationships that exist in regard to distances that are created by the centroid. Okay? Uh, so I created this uh, earlier today to, to kind of be an exercise to help us recognize uh, these relationships. Okay? The first thing that you can do on this is just click the top boxes of each one of these, and it will show you the medians and then obviously just like anything else we've done in this program uh, we can move these points around and those blue lines are always the medians. so the point of concurrency then right there point g uh is our centroid okay you don't need to do this you can drop all when when i uh find that point of concurrency okay that point is on all three of those lines correct so what i'm going to do i'm just going to I'm going to leave the centroid in there. I'm going to unhighlight those things and just focus in on that one segment. Okay? And what we learn about that one segment would be the same relationships that we end up learning about maybe that one segment, which would be the same as the relationships that we learned maybe about that one segment. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go back to that first one. And what I'm going to do here, what I've done, and just kind of showing you the algebra over here, there's a lot of stuff going on over here of just kind of evaluating the lengths of uh, that blue median, okay? And there's really, there's three distances that we can talk about. There's from A to F, okay, which would be the entire median, right? And if we've got that point G in there, that point G is going to take that entire median and cut it into two smaller parts, doesn't it? Yeah. We go G to F and we go G to A, right? So we have three segments, A to F, A to G, and then G to F. Those three segments all relate to one another in a very interesting fashion. Okay. Um, a lot of times this is referred to as like the uh, like the centroid section theorem. Okay, because it breaks this centroid breaks this median into some sections here uh, that have a unique relationship. Okay. So I click that button. Now a lot of junk comes up. So uh, kind of walk you through it. Uh, now I know you can't see it from maybe where you're sitting. Uh, just underneath those check boxes, I just got the individual values of the entire median, which is the blue. Uh, then I've got the red segment that is showing up in the in the triangle. That distance is, is being written down. And then the green distance in the triangle is being written down. Okay? Those were the three distances that get created by that centroid. Uh, and those are the three distances that we really want to compare. And we're going to compare them in the order of the green fraction, the blue fraction, and then that purple fraction. Okay. The first one I want you guys to look at is this purple one. Okay. And this purple one says we are going to compare in the numerator, and it really doesn't matter whether we, we use that fraction or it's reciprocal, but in the numerator, we're going to put the vertex to the center. Okay. So if I go down my picture, the vertex is point A. That's what we're interested in for the median, right? So point A to point G. That's the numerator. That's the 21.85 number. Okay. The denominator is the centroid to the midpoint. Okay? So that's the green portion that goes from G to F. Okay? As I start moving things around, you can see here that it's doing that division for me. Okay? And if you were to take your calculator out, you would probably find out that you type those numbers in, you're going to get like 2.0000 and then some numbers after that. Or 1.999999 and then some numbers after that. Okay? Because what we've done there, the, the you know, I'm, I'm rounding to four decimal places there in my fraction. So it's going to be a little bit around here. Okay? But the more decimal places that you incorporate, the closer and closer your result, your quotient, 
gets to two. That makes sense? Okay. And as a fraction, that's a two to one comparison. Now, what I want you to see here is that if you took your calculator and type those in and hit enter, you get you know something really close to two. If I do that, okay, the the quantities change here, right? My numerator and denominator, those values changed. But does the ratio of two to one ever change? No. Okay. So what that's telling me is that this distance from F to G, two of them, no, that, that, that distance changes, but two of those is equal to the red distance. Okay. So it takes two green segments to equal one red segment. That means that G isn't exactly the Exactly. Okay. It's two thirds of the way to move. Yes. Okay. Um, which is another ratio that we're going to use here. Um, but we see then uh, that the the shortest distance of the green and the red, which one's the shortest? Green. Green. And as I move things around, let's see if I if I move my vertices around. Oh. Does that, in, in comparison to just the the red one, is the green one always going to be smaller? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, that green, obviously we can't, every problem that we come across, we can't say the green segment, okay? So that segment is referred to, if you look in the, uh, the ratios, it's the, the centroid. It's the, it's the green one is the centroid to the midpoint. The centroid to the FB and the midpoint of BC. The centroid to the midpoint is always the smallest segment. And then the centroid to the vertex, or the vertex to the centroid, the red one, is going to be the long one. Okay. So comparing them to one another, comparing them to one another, they are in a um, one to two relationship. Okay. Now, like I said, you could have flipped this. You could have taken this purple fraction and flipped it upside down, so you get instead of a two to one, you get a one to two. Does that make sense? So it matters which one you compare. Green one to red one is one to two. Red one to green one is two to one. Okay. Uh, that is a relationship. That's a ratio that I think you should probably write down. Vertex to centroid divided by centroid to midpoint is always 2 to 1. That's going to be a ratio that you're going to want to kind of reference um, when you're doing your homework. Because okay? uh, if you look at the problem up there, the, the picture, there's a couple other ratios that exist here as well. That's the easiest one. Okay? Um, but again, we've got to know what we're comparing. To midpoint. Don't write the numbers down. Okay, so um, I tried to I tried to move uh, some points around here to see the other ratio. Um, would you guys agree, based on the triangle that I just put up there, would you guys agree that there would be some triangle where the green distance could be one? Yeah. And what would the red distance be if the green distance is one? Two. two. It'd be two. Okay. So the total the total median would be what? Three. 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 So if I take the green one, why don't you just make it one? I, I just can't. I can't. The way I set it up, I can't. If, if I make the green one one. And I compare that to the entire median. The entire median being three. Three. What's that ratio? Three to one. Three to one. Three to one. Okay. But if I go green to entire, green to entire. One to three. One to three. Okay. And that's the way. That's the way I'm going to present it. Um, because of the way your textbook presents. They always present using the uh, their green. Uh, the ratio between the zero and one. They use the one third. Um, so green. To the entire thing is a one to three relation, and, and you can see that that's happening here. We're taking and this is actually the the blue ratio. If I take the centroid to the midpoint, okay, so that's referring to that distance right there, and I divide it by the entire median, which is a to f, which is saying that that distance is three. If I divide those two numbers, it's always going to give me 0.3 repeating, which as a ratio is one to three. 
Now, no matter where I put A, B, and C, those, those distances obviously change, right? But if I divide those out, I still get 0.3 repeating, okay? So that distance from centroid to a midpoint is always one-third from vertex to midpoint. It's always one-third the entire median length. I just have a big joke. Question. Yeah. So, in this case, would A be a vertex or a a is the vertex. Because we're referring back to the vertex of the triangle. Okay. After the midpoint of the side of the triangle. So F the centroid to midpoint? F, the green one, is from the centroid to the midpoint. Yes, it's F to the midpoint. And then the centroid to the green is M G. Yes, G is the centroid, and then G to A on the bottom right, that is the segment from the vertex to the centroid. So could it be the other way? What do you mean the other way? Like centroid be the small part? No, no. The centroid, the centroid is always going to be closer to the midpoint over here. It's always going to be closer to that point than it will be the vertex. Okay, okay that's a good question. Um, so going like going back to the idea of, of being able to maybe have a triangle where the green one was a distance of one uh, in the red one is a distance of two, so and that's pretty close. Uh, what would the red one be compared to the entire median? It would be two compared to what? Three, three, three. And we're seeing that ratio again. Okay. So on your note, I would write. How come those numbers never change? Because it's just it's the the feature of, the, of this uh, relationship uh, that whenever I take those two numbers in the volume. Um, whatever they are, they because of the centroid location, it's always going to be show up as, as point three repeat. Those numbers should be a hundred to something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I go, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, we're seeing, so one, of them, so one of them's up there into the hundreds, right? Yeah. Okay. Divide those two numbers, they're always in a two to three relationship. Okay. Uh, now, just depending on how much time we have in the next couple of days, um, you, you keep asking, well, why? How is that possible? And there should be a what to this to show why that's possible. Reason. A reason, proof. and we use proofs to show oh, the reason. Right? Sure. Uh, so, uh, provided the time, um, we, we might go through the the proof of why that is. Uh, we'll have to have some algebra to do that. Okay. Um, you started saying something real. You should write this down. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you should write now on your notes, I would write that green ratio that says vertex to centroid over entire median is always 2 to 3. And centroid to midpoint divided by entire median is always equal to 1 over 3. Okay. And then hopefully you've already got the purple one that uh, we can talk about in Vertex to centroid divided by entire median is 2 to 3. Centroid to midpoint divided by entire median is 1 to 3. What would be your question? Like, what, which one would you need to find? That's what we'll read. We'll, we'll give an example here. Right, entire median. Like, you know what I mean? Right now, like, we, like, no, like Okay, so, so, so here's your question. So you're saying. Let's say that I know, let me get rid of that. So let's say that I know the red one is 96.9, let's just go 5, 96.95. We should be able to use that relationship to find the green one, okay? Now, if I know the red one, and I look at the green one, is the red one twice as big as the green one? Huh? No, think, think what we're trying to do, we're trying, that's the ratio that whenever I know these two lengths, I divide these two lengths, I'll always get 0.6667, okay? But if I want to find this length, let's say right now I don't know that length right there, right? Okay. But I know that that length and that length compare to one another, right? Yeah. So I'm going to look at the parts that I have and the parts that I'm interested in. I'm interested in looking for that distance right there, which is a vertex, or sorry, a centroid to a midpoint, right? 
So I'm going to look over through these two things, and, or these three uh, ratios, and say, well, I've got, I've got the ability to eliminate that one, don't I? Yeah. Because that one doesn't incorporate a vertex, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, uh, a centroid to a midpoint. Does not incorporate a centroid to a midpoint. So it's either one of these. So then I look at the other part that I have, and I have a centroid to a vertex. Which one of these deals with a centroid to a vertex and a centroid to a midpoint? Midpoint. The purple one. The blue one in there. No, no, wait. The purple one. Okay, yeah. Vertex to a centroid, so that's this blue part, right? Vertex is yeah. And then we've got a centroid to a midpoint, which is the red part, right? Okay. So maybe that's the relationship that I want to use. Can you start off with the, from left to right side? No. What do you mean, well, Looking at the purple. Those are the green ones. Did you do the vertex, the uh, centroid, or how did you do entire region? We'll talk, we'll, we'll get some examples. I think you're trying to do all the different possible examples at one time. Okay. Um, if, if I've got these two components, look at this. Doesn't it say the vertex to the center? Okay. That distance right there, A to G, yeah. is in a two to one relationship to the center and the midpoint, right? Yeah. So we're saying that this, this distance here, excuse me, <laughs> is twice as big <laughs> as that one, right? So if this one is in a two to one relationship of that one, if that's twice as big as this one here, how can I find that this will let me do that number? Divide by two. And, that, and that, that will give me that value. Okay, so divide 96 by two real quick in your head. Yeah, 40, 48. Yeah, you get in the ballpark of probably 48, right? Okay. So if I show that distance let's see if i can i think i hit it a minute ago oops go back there it is okay so that number is 48 you see it showing up there right okay now if i have that 48 if i take 48 plus 96 48 plus 96 is going to be about 145 right if i take that 145 divided by 48 or 48 divided by 145 i should get one over three if I take the 96 divided by 145, I should get 2 over 3. What do you mean? Okay. So it's all about what parts we're comparing to one another. All right. Uh, so we'll see some examples. We'll do some examples here. But what this is, and I'll post this on the website, um, I just wanted to provide you with kind of a visual proof that that ratio, that set of three ratios, is consistent no matter where you put your points A, B, and C in the, in the coordinate plane. Um, if you start clicking on these, okay, I would not click on them all at one time because it gives you a lot of stuff, right? Um, but now if we look at that rate, that uh, median and look at the ratios there, okay, uh, if I look at that purple set of ratios again, what's 35 divided by 2? Um, 35 divided by 2 is? Well, uh, 17, 17, right? Yeah, 17.5. So, yeah, in the ballpark of 17.6, right? So, we see here, I want to ask you to do there, is just recognize that that does work out to two, right? Yeah. Now, I didn't go as far in this one as I, I put the two over one here, right? Yeah. In this one, I didn't put the two over one over here. But if you did the division there, you'd get two. If you did the division here, you would get what? Two over three. Two over three. Well, what would you get here? One over three. One over three. Okay. So. It's the same relationship, whichever median you look at, when you know where the centroid is on that median. Is that doable? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's let's take this and see some problems that we can do with it. This this here, this theorem that I said we're going to kind of skip over, uh, is what we just talked about. Okay. Um, so now do an example. Now, the, the example gets pretty um, ugly here, okay, because and especially a lot of the questions that you guys are going to get, uh, they put in a lot of information that maybe you don't need all of it. Four. Huh? Oh, we'll run all the way across, yeah, 12. Okay, I see you give me an answer. All right, so what they do here... Um, they don't tell me anything about this picture, but we, we can read that A has got to be a what for X, Z? A midpoint. A midpoint. C has got to be a what for X, Y? Midpoint. midpoint. Uh, and B has got to be a what for Y, Z? Midpoint. 
midpoint. So all of these segments on the interior of the triangle have to be medians, right? Okay. So the reason they give me all those medians is ultimately to see that that is a median and that is a median Tell me that point A is a what? Centroid. Centroid, okay? So this is what I do. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying uh, it's wrong, but it, it is a technique that is useful, I think, to do. There's a lot of lines in that picture there, right? Yeah, there's like seven. Right, so I'm only going to deal with the one that I'm interested in, okay? I'm going to draw that. So that median right there is that one. Does that make sense? Okay, because uh, I, mean, I know to use that one because that's the one that's dealing with X. It's dealing with B. And it's dealing with A, which is all the point, or sorry, all the problem we kind of talked about with those three points, right? And I'll put A right there. Um, and, and I know, and hopefully you do too, that A is going to always be closer to B. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, the centroid is always closer to uh, the midpoint. The centroid is always closer to the midpoint. Alright, so in the event of trying to answer this question, okay, there's a couple different approaches we can use. Um, they first tell me that x to a, x to a was 8, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they give me that distance to be 8. And now they want me to find that distance. Uh -huh. Okay. What I always do, because this will, this will work um, when we start getting expressions for xA and xB. Okay. Um, I look at the types of segments that they give me. Okay. XB is the what? I don't know. <laughs> Equal the entire entire midpoint. Mid second. Median. Median. Uh, okay. So we're comparing the entire median. You think about the all the ratios we dealt with, the entire median was always on the bottom. So I look at the, the parts of the given. They give me the entire median, and they also give me then x to a. Well, x to a is a vertex leading the entire median. To the center. X to b is the only Well, those are the parts that they ask that they're they're asking me about, right? I don't know, I can't. Can you yeah, back in, back in the original problem, they gave me that XA is 8 and XB is what I'm looking for. So, so XB is the entire median? Yeah. So so they, they provide that. I said they, they gave me that, but they provided that information. They provided those segments that I should probably focus on, right? Okay. Um, so if we go back to. Wait, if they would have said, like, find A to B, would it be central uh, to the. Central to mid. Okay. So we go back then to the ratios that you saw on uh, the geogebra that I had you write down. Uh, if I go vertex to centroid, vertex to centroid compared to the entire median. Okay. Vertex to centroid compared to the entire median. If we evaluate that, that's a two to three relationship, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Okay. So now I know, based on the parts they gave me, there should be a two to three comparison. Okay. Um, so. What we do is we say which one would be smaller? A to B. A. Well, now, careful of the parts that they gave. You. X to A. X to A. Yeah. And I'm looking at X to B. Those are the parts they gave me, right? Yeah. My goal is to make them an equation. But obviously, the way they're provided right now, if I look at the blue segment and the purple segment, they are different, right? So I cannot put an equal sign in, the, in them until I enlarge one of them or decrease one of them, right? That's enlarge. Okay. Uh, I'm going to decrease. Okay, because of the ratios that we've been dealing with. We've been dealing with two-thirds, right? So which one would I need to shrink to get to the other one? XA. I, the mid, median. Yeah, I need to shrink this one, don't I? So that it can become the blue one? So, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to shrink XB. Okay. So I'm going to say that XB, X to B, I want to say x to a is two thirds of x to b. Putting a putting a multiple out front of something that is between zero and one, we're always shrinking something, right? So that sense? If, I, if I take like give you the value ten and put a one half out there, what's it do that ten? Makes it smaller. Makes it smaller, right? Makes it go to five. 
If I give you 12, I put two thirds up. I think that's two thirds. Eight. 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 Four. Eight. Eight. Okay. Uh, so we have now taken XA, okay, and saying it is two thirds of XB. All right. Um, so now if I know what XA was, XA was what? Eight. Eight. XA was eight. We're looking for XB, right? Okay, so XB is my variable in this case. So how do I solve for XB? Uh, divide by two thirds times by eight. Okay, divide by two thirds. But dividing a fraction by a fraction, or just dividing by a fraction in general, is exactly the same as multiplying by what? The reciprocal. The reciprocal. Okay, so I'm multiplied by three halves. Come over here and multiply by three halves. Okay, so three times eight is? 16, no, 30, no, 21. 24. 24. And then two times one is? Two. two. So you're 24 over two, which one is? 12. 12. 12. So XB is 12. All right, does that make sense? That's one way of doing it. I think that's the best way of doing it. Okay, because of what we're gonna do next. But some of you might have said, well, we know that, and think about whether you did this or not. If I look at that green segment, doesn't the blue one also compare to the green one? Yeah. How should they compare? The green one is half. The green one is half the blue one, right? So the blue one is eight, so the green one is four. Four. So that's not my answer there, right? No. We want an X to be. What would X to be be? Twelve. Eight plus eight plus four, right? Okay. Um, now, when you get your answer, okay, you should be able to take that answer compared to the things up here. What is 8 divided by 12? What's that reduced to? 1 third. Okay. 2 thirds. 2 thirds. What is 4 divided by 12 reduced to? 1 third. 1 third. What does uh, 4 divided by 8 reduce to? 1 half. 1 half. Okay, if I look at, the, at 2 thirds, that's a 1 third ratio, right? Mm -hmm. And 1 over 2 is the same thing as a 2 over 1, right? It's a different order. Okay. So when you're done, you should be able to always compare the results that you have, the numbers you start with, the result you get. And you should always get back a two thirds, one third, or one half. If I get back a, you know, one fourth and, and a one half, or a one fourth and a uh, two fifths, or something like that, does that tell me I've done something wrong? Yeah. yeah. I should get back one third, two thirds, one half. That's the, the built in check. Is there any computer teaching? You know a lot about that. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's, let's do this example, okay? Um, this example is the same process, but instead of numerical values now, they're putting in expressions, right? Okay. Um, again, they're talking about JC and VC, right? JC and VC. So you want to highlight those uh, parts in... Let's just see here. Let's go. Yeah. What? Shut up. All right. So they give me this picture. They put these both these medians in here just simply so they can tell me that that point is V. And that's the centroid. There's J, there's C, right? Now, given the parts that they give me, J to C. So J to C is that entire red segment, right? In V to C is that one, right? So I want to try to figure out a way. How can I make JC equal... To VC. Do what? Times the green segment by two. Oh, by three. By three. Oh, okay. Nice. Because here's here's the reason. If I think about the red one, the red one's the entire median, right? The red one is the entire median, and VC is from the centroid to the midpoint, right? Well, if I go back to my notes, my notes say that the entire median compared to uh, the centroid to a midpoint, that one right there, right? So the entire median in a centroid to a midpoint, that's in a one to three relationship. OK? 
Okay. Does that make sense? If I if I flip that, it's a three to one relationship. Either way you want to look at it. So if they're in a one to three relationship, it's saying the green one, listen to this, the green one is equal to means is, right? The green one is a third of the red. Is that doable? Or multiply both sides by three. So I get three BCs or three green ones should equal one red. Yeah, I like that one better. Okay, most people do like that one better. But what happens is that we don't necessarily know what to do when we get to the two third ratio because they can't really make either side really easy. Uh, two third ratio. Okay. Uh, so now that you have one of these and you choose either one you want to, you just now plug in these expressions. So JC is negative 4 plus 2x. I've got my 3 there on the right hand side. And now VC is x minus 3, right? So I get negative 4 plus 2x equals 3x minus 9. Uh, subtract x, 2x from both sides, add 9 to both sides, get x to be 5. So do the Okay, so if, if, if x is 5, then b to c would be 2, right? And then this thing here would be, the red one would be 6, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's uh, 2 compared to 6 reduced to? 1 half. 1 third. 1 third, okay. Would you guys agree that this blue distance, which they didn't ask me for, but we know that jv should be what? 4. 4. four. four. Okay. Well, what's four compared to six? Two thirds. Two thirds. Okay. What's two compared to four? Oh, half. One half. One half. Okay. So again, once we find our answer, we can find the other segments and then start comparing all three of them to one another, and we should get one half, two thirds, and one third back. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Um. I know that the assignment's not, you're going to probably struggle on some of these questions, okay? Um, it happens every year. We're going to spend several days on this. Uh, so when you have struggle, you encounter struggle. Um, skip it. No, don't skip it. Just buy it through it. Try to use your notes. Okay, and maybe you go and watch. We only did one example here, two examples. I've got a lot of videos online that give a lot more examples, okay? Um, so hopefully we can uh, talk about this for a couple days and, and, and really get um, good at these ratios, okay? Um, this is going to be a math up. There's another type of problem that I want to do real quick. This is this is really easy. Really up. If I if I look at uh, this triangle here, okay, and I ask you to find um, the centroid algebraic terms, like we have been doing with ortho centers and circle centers, you could take the equation of that line right there, which would be the equation of the median, right? You need y minus y1 equals n times x minus x1. You could do the same thing with this one. You could do the same thing with that one. And when you do that and you use a system of equations to solve for x and y, you should get zero. Oh. You should have gotten zero comma negative 2.67, right? Does that make sense? That's what all the algebra would have shown. So look at this over here, this formula over here. This formula is kind of independent of this triangle. The only thing it's doing is it's pulling the x and y values out of this triangle. Okay? But this work over here um, gives me the same point, doesn't it? Okay? So, so Geodre over here is using the algebra. It's using the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And then using it as a system to solve for that ordered pair. Right here, I'm just using a formula that says it's the average of the x's times the average of the y's. And we see, no matter where I move a, b, and c, no matter where I move a, b, and c, would you guys agree that that ordered pair is the same as that ordered pair? Okay. So when I ask you in your homework, you can see a couple times, find the centroid algebraically. Do not find equations aligned to that. Simply add your x values of your vertices, divide by three. Find you, uh, or add your y values of your vertices and divide by three. Average of the x's, comma, average of your y's. We've heard that phrase before, right? 
And as we, when we did midpoints and segments, oh, now I'm finding centroids of triangles. I have your three X's together divided by three, I have your three Y's together divided by three, and I'll give you the algebraic um, coordinate geometry Wait, location. Wait, so where are we getting the X, 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 the Y1, the Y2, the Y3, or the Y values in your verse. Your grades going up. 